I fundamentally believe that repairing damaged molecules and trauma will have an impact on medicine similar in scope to that witnessed in response to the development of antibiotics. Dr. Raphael Lee is working on an unprecedented solution to a problem that has plagued researchers, how to actually fix damaged cells, not just stop further damage. For the most part, the medical community doesn't really think that traumatized tissue can be salvaged. The prevailing perspective is once the tissue is severely damaged, disrupted, burned, that the goal really is to limit the loss. And the thought that uh, you could possibly reverse that injury is new. The basic principle behind Dr. Lee's discovery is that much of the damage to cells resulting from trauma is caused by the opening of pores in cell membranes. This allows intercellular fluid to flow freely and results in cell death. For Lee, understanding the function of the cell membrane was key. The outer layer of the cell is a thin membrane, and its primary function is to control transport of molecules across it. And there are two main components. One part is a lipid or thin film, like a soap film, membrane. And this function is a transport barrier. And the other part of it is 30 to 40% protein. And those proteins have multiple roles. But the main one is to maintain differences in ionic concentrations um, across that membrane. In other words, keeping the inside of the cell different than outside. If the integrity of that membrane is lost, the diffusion overwhelms the ability to pump to maintain that concentration, the cell becomes metabolically exhausted and biochemical arrest occurs. And that leads to cell death. So the integrity of that cell membrane is critical. So how do you seal the membrane of a damaged cell? The secret lies in using a biocompatible surfactant that absorbs to sites of damage and alters the local water structure, something that Ploxamer 188 does very well. The key objective at that time was to find a, a surfactant that would facilitate membrane sealing and not cause harm. And there were many of those types of surfactants available because they have been used for decades um, for clinical purposes. We chose Ploxamer 188 for just that very reason. The major questions that confront us today have to do with the optimum design of these molecules. Enter Dr. Kai-Yi Lee, a chemist at the University of Chicago. It's in her charge to develop the most efficient design for Ploxamer 188. To do this, she must understand how it interacts with the surface membrane on an even more fundamental level. In our group, we're interested in surface interactions. So the surface of interest to us is the membrane surface. And we're interested in how the membrane, as the first line of defense, interact with various components that can you know, either be supposed to be part of it or is trying to attack it. At the beginning, we're just interested in the basic interactions. And we are sort of perplexed as trying to see what is the mechanism that could possibly propel this little polymer to go in and help and do all these magic of arresting cell death. They have discovered that you can use this polymer, which is a tri polymer. All that means is that it has three blocks, and it, it is an ABA construct. So two of them are hydrophilic, that likes water, and the middle part is more hydrophobic, that doesn't like water. And so they use them and it's able to sort of arrest the leakage of the intracellular material. The project has reached an exciting new phase of development, and with the help of a pharmaceutical industry pioneer, Maroon Biotech is working to bring Paloxamer 188 to market. We've had several students who um, had an interest in interaction between business concepts and medical concepts, and they have played a role in developing a uh, plan to to make this available. We were fortunate to be able to attract a very um, highly recognized uh, and experienced business leader, uh, Richard Egan, to uh, take leadership of that process. Companies also 
have recognized more and more that universities are a fertile place for new development. Typically, in the areas I've worked in, which are pharmaceuticals, biotech pharmaceuticals, we'd like to be able to bring a product through at least a phase one trial. Although often, as we plan to do in Maroon, you, you do that safety trial in a class of patients that you want to treat. So you, even though it's small, you can collect some data on efficacy. The university's role as a center of learning gives researchers a unique opportunity to make advancements in medicine. When the university finds a technology like Palaxomer, the challenge is to, to protect it if possible and then to try to create value. And creating value means getting it um, funded, get it, finding management, find the entrepreneurial vision that can take it from the laboratory and prove it in the clinic and then take it and use it for social betterment, use it to create jobs, use it to, to help incentivize others to be successful. There are laboratories in numerous universities around this country and, and, uh, and many around the world that are now working on this problem. And uh, it's becoming recognized to be a very important new approach to treatment of disease.